Hello, friends. You're all having a wonderful day. Boy, it is a beautiful day here in Oklahoma. And I hope you guys can hear me. I'll try to talk up a little bit. I'm going to head on into town for a little bit. I got to get a couple of things. And so I thought I would go ahead and take you guys with me. But it's so green and perfect weather. A little cloudy. It's going to rain a little bit today. But, uh, yeah, what's going on? Does anybody know? Really? Does anybody know what's going on? I just real quickly went on to YouTube and I didn't even watch anything or something. I don't know. Just bumped it. Ben Carson was standing in front of the podium and he was saying that 98% of, of everybody who gets coronavirus will recover. That we can't operate in hysteria. We're all a bunch of grown-ups, aren't we? That's what I thought. But then this has been going on for a long time. There's been a lot of things that I thought was pretty weird that everyone else didn't see it. And I was thinking about this last night, too. I was just kind of pondering and sitting, meditating. But I was thinking... about just what kind of mind we have, what, what kind of consciousness, what, you know, like we, we use the word truth, reality. My daughter was doing some homework and I was looking over her homework and you know, she goes to university, getting her master's, and so she's going over some pretty deep stuff. And they're, they're basically talking about paradigms and that Newtonian physics was a good paradigm. She was studying Kuhn and his analogy of paradigms and how they change. And I guess what they're basically saying is, is that mankind goes through various stages we have where we live in a paradigm, a certain belief system Um, that we believe is true and we act upon it as though it is true and an example of that is Newto Newtonian mechanics New Newtonian physics the scientific world said that you know they had come to a place where I mean Kuhn was saying there's several stages of of science and at the beginning, people just are looking for answers, but they don't have a, a paradigm. So all the scientists are looking everywhere, off, you know, in different ways, trying to figure it out. And then somebody comes along and has a theory, and it's confirmed. And other scientists say, "Well, yes, we've confirmed it." And there develops a consensus, and then you have a a basic physics paradigm so you 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 understand the universe in a certain way and everybody understands it that way and we go along until we get to a crisis where some other bit of information that we understand and we figure out comes along and it doesn't fit with the paradigm it just doesn't match
So then he calls that the revolution. And the scientists are then faced with coming up with a new paradigm. Now, an example of that was, uh, I don't know, there were several things. They were using certain Einsteinian or Newtonian concepts in, in his three laws of physics to try and understand the orbits of the planets around the sun. And it seemed like it all worked, but there was an anomaly with the orbit of Mercury. I think they later on found there was another anomaly with Pluto, but they didn't know Pluto existed, I guess. But um, it wasn't working out by measuring the mass and this and that. For a while they said, well, it's not too important because you can't really see Mercury anyway so bright looking into the sun. Because Mercury is a planet that's between the Earth and the sun. It's the first planet in the first ring of the, around the sun. So when you're looking at it, it's so bright, it's very difficult to observe. So nobody could really prove that there wasn't that it, maybe it was correct and maybe Newtonian physics was correct. Well, it turns out that everything is relative because the mathematical formula that Newton had come up with could accurately give you the orbits and different, a good, it would give you a good equation to figure out the gravity of a, of a certain planet. But there were factors he didn't understand that was later demonstrated in the special theory of relativity. And that was a new paradigm. And with that paradigm, they could understand things in other solar systems beyond it. Because not everybody, not the laws don't always work the same on other in, for other people for another point of view it's relative and it had to do with the the fact that light was warped by mass and and different things like that so it was uh it, it really changed the absolute newtonian physics paradigm and it shocked scientists but that wasn't the end of it even after Einstein passed away, we developed a new paradigm that today we call quantum physics, which explains a lot more. And in this one, you're getting very close to a paradigm that says that it's not just relative, but it's literally not even there. It's all an illusion. It's all a perception of mind that we're living in basically a hologram. And it's funny because it, we've almost come full circle because scientists started in the modern era because they didn't like religion. And today we call Buddhism a religion. Well, there's where all, you get all your terminology mixed up and you don't know what the hell you're talking about because Buddhism is not a religion neither is Christianity there it's a book of axioms written down in a language that is far superior to the present scientific language that was invented by the ancient ones and it's today what we call we think of it as mythology we think it's just fairy tales but it's actually a language that is closer to the original way that people think because it uses pictures. And the parables are pictures that explain the universe and therefore you meditate upon these parables and you get a much better understanding of the universe. So we've come full circle and we've we've got scientists now admitting that Newtonian physics was wrong and 
even Einsteinian and Einsteinian physics was wrong. All this talk about particles and physical matter and speeds of light and everything is all ridiculous. It doesn't really, it's not really true. It's all your own perception. So, I find this to be very imp intriguing because I believe that what we're actually saying without being aware of it is that there's a lot that we're all walking around in an illusion that's not just some sort of physical equation like the way we look at science and everything. It's not really the the, 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 the higher answer is far more than that. It's that language itself has become a prison. Just as the material universe was thought of as a prison by some, the truth is it's not any material anything out there. It's really the language that you speak, your science, your paradigm is the illusion. It's really just your paradigm. And it is so subtle that you probably aren't yet really understanding what I'm talking about. Because, you know, it really gets deep. Let's say, like we were talking about this in the video we did yesterday. Let's say that you believe in God. And you say God, and you spell it G-O-D. Like I said, I could also use the word the divine being. But now I'm using an English word that is derived from the Greek. But if I use the word God, I'm using an English word that's derived from the German, the old Scandinavian. And both of those words we use for the same thing, and yet the root of each of them in their respective languages might not be the same word at all. In the German scheme of things, when they said God, now there's debate about this, but I've come to understand myself in my research that it comes from um, the word Woden. I think, in a sense, you'll find out that it is similar to other languages, but but it's not talking about the the God or the person or the divine being that are that that we need to understand is that you know it's this that's this whole thing we've been talking about with the Old Testament and the New Testament, the shadows and types and the reality, and Christianity didn't understand that that the, 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 the shadows and the types was where the God being was. Where he was the ruler. He was the master. And he, you were the slave. And he could kill you because you were disobedient. And he was vengeful and angry. And he taught us war and death. And that was the paradigm they lived under. Christ came along and if we could speak the Greek that, he, that it was written in. And we understood that in its current form. The the common Greek, we would get a very different picture, but we could still figure it out. Because what Jesus was saying was that whole paradigm of the law and their God is not the truth. It's just a parable. And he said, your 
paradigm, your law, your government is not my government. It's not my law. Your God is the devil. Now that's a big paradigm shift. You're worshiping sincerely, probably. I don't think Jesus said they weren't sincere. But they were worshiping God. But Jesus comes along and says, wait a minute now, there, do you know that there are two gods? There are two paradigms, two covenants, two systems. There's two in everything, male and female. There's, there's the beneath and the above. There's the physical and the spiritual. So Jesus says, what you're doing is you're following the, the, the physical. And your God is the ego. And he's from beneath, from below. But he says, my father, he doesn't use the word God. He doesn't use the word Yahweh. And he doesn't use the word Lord or anything. But he says, Uranos, which is a Greek word, a specific name, which encompasses the word Or and Anu, which is heaven. Or being, being light. Now, if you look at astrology, you'll see on the top of the wheel, there's the sun and the heavens, and then at the bottom of the wheel is the darkness, the winter. And so, the light was understood to be at the top in the sky. And the sky was understood to be at the top of the wheel, and beneath that was the bottomless pit and the, the great abyss, the ocean, and there was the god that ruled down there, which was the, the set or the Saturn, you know, set in Egyptian, Saturn, the Romans, Saturnalius. He was, he had different names, Capricorn, we call him now sometimes, Pan. Well, Pan is another word for Dan, and a Dan's another word for Odan. And sometimes they said Woden. And in a few Germanic languages, it was Godin. And it really, was just like the Babylonian Baal, which meant the bull, or the bull, or the bail, or the ball. And it was really talking about the bull. Or, the in this language, we were talking about the goad, or the goat. And he was the and listen, don't get me wrong, everybody all around the world, all of the religions worshipped the physical. And they, they, they lived in the times of the dark winter. We were all being taught in, in a school, a grand class. You know, there was, the, this, this God's laws were universal. His governments, war, crime, death, famine, it was all around the world. Everybody had a government king armies, and they all followed the God on the bottom of the wheel. Now, the Jews may have called him Yahweh. Sometimes they call him Adone. Well, Adon is the Hebrew. Adone is a certain tense of the word. It's the same as it's Aten, Adon, Adone, Adoni, Adoni. And also, in as we said in Revelation chapter 9, Abi. Abad, Abaddon, which is Abbey Father Adon. Not the Father of Heaven, but the Father of Don, which is Dan, the tribe of Dan, which is at the bottom of the wheel, the Scorpio Serpent sign, who rules at the bottom of the world. Dan, sometimes known as Pan, the goat god, that literally, you can go to this day at, at the bottom, base of Mount Hermon, where Jesus took his disciples and said that the gates of Hades would not prevail against his gathering. And that was the gates of hell. Right there at Pan's temple at the base of Mount Hermon, where, according to all the Apocrypha and Sumerian tablets and everybody else, these gods, these, these fallen angels came down and had a pact and made a pact upon Mount Hermon in the mountains of Bashan, talked about throughout the whole Bible, and they made up and they began to mate with human beings and they created a a line of a royal bloodline on the earth of 
God men who ruled the world. Priest, king priests, royal blood. From Dan, who left Sidon and went to, and leap, the Bible says he shall leap from Bashan and he will be a serpent that shall bite the horse's heel. That was the horses of the colonization of the world and Joseph shall push the peoples to the ends of the earth. Dan shall follow him and be like a lion's whelp or be a royal bloodline. And he shall rule his people, Israel. Dan shall be a ruler, but not a good ruler. Because throughout Daniel, he tells you about this beast, this dragon, the serpent, the original. He talks about him and says it's bad and it's after the woman. Da, 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 da. And the woman gives birth to a child who's the shepherd the, the nations with a rod of iron. And this is the other bloodline, which is the Christ bloodline, which came from the, the raw or the the sun or the phoenix bird or the, the line of Enoch the phoenix the king priest that came down this is through the virgin birth who God chosen God's chosen birth line that would rule the world which is Christ which is a spiritual understanding it's our spiritual selves there's the flesh and the spirit so we're living, we lived in this, this, um, this paradigm that we thought the world was physical. Now it is what you believe it is. It is what you see with your mind and you see with your eyes what you believe in your heart because you're manifesting your reality. So if you live in a, a paradigm of this karma which is the law of Moses, the condemnation, the, the endless cycle of rebirth, then you are bound, the laws of bondage and a curse, and you need to be redeemed or saved from it. The only way to be saved, which is to be preserved whole, is to get back to that which is real, shift your paradigm, be born again into a, another world and worship the God that Jesus worshiped, which is his father, which is above. Your father is beneath, but my father is above. Your father is the liar and the murderer. You wish to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer when he began. My father is love. There is no condemnation in him. There is no condemnation in us who walk after Christ. That God was jealous. That is his name. My name is jealous. That is my name. Vengeance is mine, saith that Yehovah. But Jesus' his father, the Apostle Paul, 1 Corinthians 13, says that love is not jealous, does not brag, get puffed up, does not boast, does not take account of any of your injuries. God's not looking upon you trying to find some fault in you. That's the wrong God. So that's the God of this world who's blinding the minds of the unbelievers according to the New Testament. But we're still under the old paradigm. We, we, There were the Judaizers, the ones who wanted to go back to the law of Moses that Paul warned about. Ye who want to be under the law. Do you understand? It's slavery. But you see, you're starting to understand, I think, the two paradigms. But it's deeper. I had to start there. So Odin is the god of Dan and it's Woden or Godin or God and that's that's the goat face, the, the egotistical god of wrath. And so in some sense when you're saying God you're also just Describe, you're just naming this, this old God that everybody's always worshipped. It was legit. It's God, but it's not the God or the Father of Heaven. It's not above. It's beneath. You might as well say Yahweh. Yahweh. Iya. Iya Inki. Because 
It's just another name come down through different languages of the same deity. As we said, Adonai is another name for Yehovah. Adon or Woden or God. So God is Yehovah. But he has the, the key to the pit, to the abyss. He has the key to death because he, he, he binds you with his curse, with the law, with this illusion. But let me explain something to you. Let's decide, let's just say that we um, we finally realize this is an illusion. It's a, the wrong paradigm, and we decide we don't want to be a part of that anymore. So we say, okay, I'm not going to keep the law of Moses no more. I'm free. I'm going to go by the Holy Spirit. I'm going to love one everybody I see. I'm going to give. I'm going to forgive everybody. I'm not going to judge my neighbor. I'm going to, you know, love because he first loved me and shed forth his grace upon us all. And you start going around thinking that way, but you're still going to have some problems because you're, that's kind of like living under the rules of Microsoft 10, but you're still on Vista, Microsoft Vista or Microsoft 7. Right? And the rules don't work when you're in that other... When you're in the illusion, the laws of grace don't work. See, if you're angry and you hate people, then the law of love is not going to help you. Because your intentions are wrong. How can you get out of this old paradigm. Well, remember what Jesus said. He is the Word. The Bible says the Word and all things were created by the Word. Nothing that was made that was ever made could be made without the Word. And the Word is literally the Greek logos, which is what, you know, we get the word logistics or logic or mind from that the expression or the word that's expressed from the speaker a saying expression so the expression of the higher mind how do you express your mind with a word see it literally does mean a word when you're talking about humans because it starts with, we have an intent, a mind, a desire, a wish, a thought. In order to make our thought reality, we imagine, see, we image it, we imagine, we image it, we have a, a picture. This is the higher science, the higher paradigm. We, when, you, when you picture in your mind, what you want, what you believe, what what you intend, and then you speak it into the world. And you say, let it be. You make known your intentions. You say, amen, so be it. Now, today we think this is some sort of a ceremony. In the name of the Lord and the Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and you do a little thing on your forehead, and you dip yourself in the water three times, and you come back up, and you take a wafer, and then you, you know, it, it's just some sort of a abracadabra shazam. It's a ceremony. It, that's not it. You're living in the wrong. See, the ceremony, the ab abracadam, abracadabra thing, it's just a, a, a parable. It's telling you that it's a secret little thing. You got to know the, the code and you just need to know what you're doing. And you speak it in abracadabra, but, it, but you can't just say abracadabra. That's just the old parable. You've got to get yourself shifted into the new paradigm. And you've got to understand the magic. You've got to become a magician. So, throughout the New Testament, you see Jesus 
walking up to people and telling them, oh, they were blind. He said, oh, well, here, tell you what. He takes some dirt and he spits in it and he makes some clay and puts it in their eye. Then he says, now you go and you baptize in the river Jordan seven times and come back and you'll be able to see. What is that, some kind of a magical ceremony? No, he's giving you hints in there what you need to do. Part of opening your eyes is experience. And being baptized in the river means be baptized in the frequencies, the lower frequencies of the water down below on the wheel of life. You need to be reborn from the water seven times. In other words, as many times as it takes until you learn and you understand and you get it. You need to be reborn because that which is born of of flesh is flesh and that which is born of spirit is spirit. So there's two kinds of being reborn. You can be reborn over and over again in the same flesh, in another body in this world, with karma bringing you back. Or you can get out of that paradigm, you can forgive everybody that's ever done you wrong, and then you will be forgiven. When you truly forgive, when you truly get out of the paradigm and stop looking at the world as though it's a physical problem it has to be solved. You've got to have justice. People got to be punished. There's got to be prisons. You got to go by the law. Because after all, if you don't go by the law, somebody could get hurt. You might kill somebody and that's murder and that's wrong. Well, what if we don't have bodies? What if we can never die? Then that's just superfluous. It's not even relevant. Because when you're a child of the Heavenly Father, your spirit, and spirit is, you know, you're, you're, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, mildness, goodness, and against such things there is no law. Your spirit, your love, you, your, your intentions are perfect. You have no, you have no need. You don't need to steal because you have no needs. You're the creator. So there's no law against theft because you would never need to steal from anybody because you, you own everything. There's a, a there's plenty for everyone. There's there's no lack. But it's but but though but that's a beautiful thought perception to imagine what we're talking about. But how can we really do this? Well, the problem is very very deep, much deeper than you probably even know and that's what this really is about today what I wanted to get across today it's very important that you understand this as long as you go to college and you're learning let me put it this way let's say you don't want to go anywhere you do not want to go anywhere you're in your car and you don't want to go anywhere well if you put it in drive you're gonna go somewhere so as long as you're going through the motions of putting it into drive, then you can't just not go somewhere. You may not want to go where you're going. You may be confused. You might have a crash, but you're going to move. The car's going to move. The wheels are going to be engaged. You're going to take off if you put it in drive and put on the gas. So you can't go through the motions of something that you don't believe in. So if you say you believe in the other paradigm, you believe in grace, you believe in truth, and you're running around judging people, that's not going to work. But look, it's deeper than that, friend. It's much deeper. You believe in the Father in heaven and you're running around saying God. Now I know it's subtle and you don't even know what that word means and you didn't mean to say that and all of that. But yet, hey, actually you did mean it. You do believe in the law. You do believe um, in justice, don't you? You do demand justice. You're living in that paradigm. That is your God. You have not recognized the Christ. You don't know who he is. You can't see him. Jesus said, why is it you do not believe me? Because he said, I am from my father. And the father, no one knows the father but the son. And no one knows the son but the father. And anyone to whom the son shall reveal him. How does the son reveal him? Well, 
You've got to know the Son in order to know the Father. You've got to know your inner spiritual self. You've got to know joy. You've got to know love. You've got to know His grace. And you can't be operating in the other paradigm to know Him. You can't be cozying up. You can't be friends with the world and the friends of God. Because whoever is a friend of the world is an enemy to our Father in Heaven. Oh, but I thought your Father in Heaven didn't have enemies. Well, he's the antithesis. Antithesis to, to like, it's like saying, could God ever lie? No, it's impossible for God to lie. Is it, it could God ever do evil? No, it's, it's impossible for God to do, for our Father in Heaven. Excuse me. <laughs> See how it creeps up on you? But as long, you know, mostly you've got to understand who you're talking about when you're talking about your Father in Heaven, or your, the divine being. Gotta know who you're talking about. So, Jesus said, I come from the Father and I'm going to tell you who my Father is. I'm going to show you the way. This is all very cryptic to most Christians. They have no idea what he's talking about. The way to the Father. What are we going to do? Get in a spaceship and take off? It's not about that. It's about getting to the inner spiritual self within you. Because remember, you're the temple of the living divine being. You're the temple of love. If you don't know where inside is, if you're searching for him outside, then you can't find him. You're going in the wrong direction. So this is why we, we can't see the Father and live. Because the, the Heavenly Father is spirit. And nobody can see spirit. It's invisible. But it's much more powerful. It's not this paradigm. When you look at this world, the physical world, you're not looking at the spiritual. So when you go to school and you learn all these Newtonian physics and uh, Einsteinian relativity and quantum bit all of this stuff when you learn it and you and you're trying to understand it what you're doing is you're forcing your mind to believe in falsehood in other words you're dissecting your own thoughts and you're beginning to try and understand why when I think of ball do I see a ball in front of my face and so you you say, well, give me a tape measure, all right? You're, 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 so you got your eyes closed, and you're seeing the ball right in front of your face. And in your mind, you're you, you're going to study the ball that you're. Let's say it's a big orange, right? You concentrate and you focus on it, and you say, I'm going to look at a big orange in front of me. But it's it's in your mind. You're imagining it. Well, in your mind, you imagine a tape measure, and you pull the tape measure out, and you measure it. And it says, well, this big old orange is six inches across. That's a big one. Okay. But touch it. What does it feel like? Is it hard or is it soft? You touch it and you say, well, it's kind of rough and it's kind of hard on the outside, but I can tell it's kind of softer in the inside. And Well, then in your imagination you're said now go in and and smell it what does it smell like and you do that and you get all these statistics so that you can understand what this thing is but all the while all you're really doing is imagining an illusion and the real truth is, is that the orange is simply a figment of your imagination. It is your own thoughts. You are the real being, not the flesh. The orange is not what's real. 
The thinker is what's real. Not the orange. But you're living in an, in an imaginative world and you're still believing in your mind that it's real until you wake up. You're having a dream, it's a nightmare, and you think somebody's killing you. Somebody's running and chasing you and, and, and they got a gun and you're scared. And then just at the last minute you wake up. You wake up and you realize it was just a dream. There isn't any physical thing. You can't have a physical law what you probably did was in your mind, you knew that it was, you were believing it was real in your mind. So you, in your dream, you came up with figures and explanations why it exists. But it was all part of your little dream. You created all the laws. You created all the shapes. All the, the quantums and all of the factors and the mechanics and the physics, you created it. And you didn't have to do it the way you think you, you would do it. It wasn't like you went into a laboratory and you drew, you know, you had a ledger and you wrote out every A, B, C, D, and you had an, you know, an alphabetical order and all the terms and, and, and all the studies you've done on how it reacts and to this chemical and that. You didn't have to do any of that. You simply decided in your mind, in your, the mind that was conscious of the dream, that there were laws that you were trying to figure out. But your subconscious mind that you weren't conscious of in your dream was just, boom, popping answers out to you. So, let's say you're in your dream and there's, it's not physical, right? But you imagine a trail ahead of you. Well, you're able to go and walk down the trail and before you opens up the horizon as you walk. See, we live in a world where the horizon, we don't really live on a round earth or a flat earth, we live on a holographic plane. This is why the horizon always meets your eye. Because it's coming from your the center of your brain the information, and it goes straight out and it will go in any direction that your mind or intentions put it. So if you're thinking of an orange, you're going to see the orange. If you're thinking of the background as a wall, then you're going to see a wall. But if you change your mind and you see the background is now outer space and it's infinite, then you can see you say, well, how can I know it's infinite? Then you see a star and you see a further star and a further star and a further star. And in your mind, you didn't plan it. You didn't invent it. It just was invented immediately within your subconscious. It's so powerful. Your entity, your being created it. And you experienced it. It is what you believed it was. So you're in your dream and you cannot get out. Why? Because you're in it. You're in that fearful place. Because you had fear within you that was manifested in your thoughts. And when the, the monster arose, you were it was it, it overtook you. And immediately you stopped. You said, What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? There's a monster, and I'm gonna you, you take off running. Your mind comes up with some kind of solution to, to defeat the monster. So you run. And as you're running, all of a sudden you go down around a hill and there's a gun laying on the ground. How did that happen? Where did it come from? Your subconscious mind, boom, provided it. There's nothing there. It's just your imagination. You're in a dream. And you're, and, 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 and maybe, maybe that week you had been feeling guilty and blaming yourself for, for somebody's death or, or for, for uh, somebody who lost their job or for, you blamed yourself. You were too lazy. That's why you never became anything and you weren't able to provide for your children the way you wanted and you felt, you felt miserable and, 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 and f defeated. And that's how you felt within yourself because 
It was a paradigm you were building with your words. That's just the simple conscious part of yourself. On your out, around your outside of yourself, you were just saying stuff, sort of like a, uh, like a rudder on a ship, right? You, the little rudder moves the whole ship. So all you had to do to bring up from the depths of your subconscious all these monsters was start saying, I'm defeated. I'm scared. Why did, you know, look at this. Uh, I, I didn't get the things I wanted and my children don't have the things that I want. So it's my fault. Well, now look, that's a paradigm that you didn't create. None of us created. It. It's the subconscious. It's God. It's the, the higher, it's either the God of this world or, the, or our Father in Heaven that creates the paradigm. Either your ego or your inner most powerful intentions. The light. And so, you didn't create any of that. It just popped out of nowhere. Your innermost being created it. But see, you see, you can you can listen to the innermost being, which is pure and love and peace and grace and no guilt and 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 nobody can never die, so you can't feel guilty or you can't feel bad or because everything's beautiful. You want to you 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 feel happiness and boom, there's a butterfly. Sort of a, a reflection of your happiness. It's just, oh, look at that butterfly. And you didn't know what came first, your feeling of joy or the butterfly. Maybe the, the butterfly was a manifestation of your joy. But you had no conscious control over the butterfly. It was bubbling up from your innermost beings like eternal waters. As Jesus said, I, if you will just ask me, the Christ, the inner spiritual powerful man, the only begotten who sits by the right hand of God. If you didn't just ask me, I would have given you living waters. Whoever comes to me, I will give them living waters and shall bubble up in your innermost being. You see, it's in your innermost being that there are living waters. You have, you don't have to consciously think about it, either consciously in your dream or even consciously when you're wide awake. You don't have to do like Einstein and come up with a chart and figures and have algebra to figure it all out. As if it's a, if, if as if it's an entity of itself, and you're trying to understand it, you're not trying to understand it. It don't exist. You got to understand you. What is the reason for your depression? What is the reason for your guilt? You're in the wrong paradigm. You believe in death. You believe in pain. You believe in sorrow, justice not being served. That's what you. You believe it's simply a tree has got roots. And Jesus said you can tell that tree to be uprooted and throw it in the sea. And it will obey you because you see you have control. There are no roots. It's your imagination. And so the minute that you're in your dream and you're thinking all these negative things the day before and you go to bed with all this on your heart and weigh, weighing on your chest and you lay down and you close your eyes, you can't hardly get to sleep and you're tossing and turning and in the middle of the night, you finally, your your conscious mind finally tunes out and you see what's going on underneath down in your subconscious. And you're, and you're, you're watching all this nightmare, this monsters. And, and, and then you have a dream where your daughter is riding a, 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 a little tricycle and she falls over and, and you, tragic and something happens and everything's tragic because that's what you were saying. The day before, you were saying, I am lacking. I am guilty. I don't feel good. I'm tired. I don't know who I am. I don't like this world. You created the world. And yeah, you're being influenced by other people. You know, get thee behind me, Satan. Now, other people are going to condemn you and tell you you're, you're not good enough. But you don't listen to them because they're liars. So how do you get out of that paradigm? What do you say? I am God. I am good. I love everyone. Da, 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 da. Well, that can help. Because if you're saying I am fine, I am well, I am rich, I am happy, then that gives you less time to think about bad things. But you can literally be saying I am happy and be crying. Because you're not saying it with intent, with belief. How do you say it with belief? Well, first of all, you've got to believe or at least 
to start with, suppose that maybe you got to have a glimmer of hope. Hope leads to faith and faith leads to knowledge because you practice faith. You, you practice faith. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. In other words, you haven't seen it yet, but what makes the thing happen is your faith, which is your confidence, which is your intentions within yourself and your trusting of those intentions. What does it mean to trust your intentions? It means that you don't allow the lies. So you have a thought. You have a little thought that says you saw a beautiful cabin by a, a beautiful lake and there's beautiful mountains and streams and flowers and birds. And this is your thought. You've got a bunch of, it's, it's just like a little bubble thought bubble. It's a paradise thought. Well, if you're afraid that the monster's going to come in and take it away and destroy it, then when you go lay down at night, the monster's going to arise. Is those fears is what's happening. So what do you do to get rid of that fear? Well, if you don't believe that there is any reality to the thoughts if you come to the belief that your thoughts are your world see if you if you live in a, a, a duality where you you say i'm me but that big old monster is a big old monster and i can't do nothing about the big old monster i'm i'm being persecuted the big monsters after me that's your belief how do you get rid of it don't believe in the monster yes but what does that really mean it means you got to believe only in the reality, which is your own mind. When you grasp that you're the creator, when you grasp that you are spirit, that God is love, when you understand that the temple, the outer courtyard, is just a a thought that can you know you can you can tear down a building. But you still exist. You can tear down the body. You can get rid of the earth and you still exist. That's like the, the Apostle Peter says, the grass and the flowers are here today and they're cut down and baked. And we make bread out of the grain and the grass and the vegetation. And we burn it in the fire and we eat it. It's here today and it's gone tomorrow. But Jesus talked about eternal food. Food that doesn't perish and gives you eternal life, which is not thoughts that are fleeting, such as hate and death and destruction and suffering, because that's not the real world. The real world doesn't suffer. Because there is no suffering. There is no physical. There's, it's only your thoughts and you create what you want with your thoughts. So that's a lie that you're listening to. So you have to... So so even if you get to the place where you say, yeah, I agree with you. I, I understand it, David. I believe that. I'm going to start practicing it. You've got to know one more thing. You can't, as we said, can't serve God. Can't see, serve this God and our Father in Heaven at the same time. So you can't be harboring thoughts of guilt and depression and hate and at the same time love and happiness. Because you see, if you love somebody, you love them, you don't hate them. You can't do both at the same time. So you can't worship that God and this God because Jesus said you'll love the one and hate the other or whatever. Now, we're still talking kind of symbolically because we've got to square this to the point where we get it. So what it means then is that you literally got to say, I, I'm, I'm done with this world. Now, I don't mean you go out and shoot yourself in the head. That's not, no, 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 no. You don't need to get rid of the, you don't, you don't shoot your thoughts, right? Oh, I don't like my thoughts. Boom. You know, no, your thoughts are simply the manifestation of your own mind. So. You can't live in both worlds, so you can't, I know this is going to sound crazy, and a lot of you are going to probably be very upset by this. 
Well, Dave, I went to university for seven years and got my PhD, and you're telling me it was worthless? Yes, it's worthless. Sorry. I'm sorry. Because it's temporary world. All your gold shall perish with you. And all this carnal knowledge. I told you guys before, I used to work on computers. I had a, a computer shop for five years, and I took viruses off of people's computers, and I, you know, I could do programming and get right into your back through a back door into your you know without the password and i could work on and build computer i did all that stuff right he said well that's a lot of knowledge well that's amazing no it was baloney when i was working on computers it was vista and windows xp and then it was vista and then it was windows 7 and and then that's about where i stopped then they came out with windows 9 and 10 and now i don't it's completely different I don't even know what it's about. It changes. It's always changing. And it's been a few years. And now if I tried to work on a, a modern program computer, I, I would be lost. And I'm, and when if I get to the pearly gates and Peter says, hey, you want to come into heaven? I say, yay. Yeah, I got uh, qualifications, Peter. I know how to work on computers. I'm smart. I'm an I'm a engineer or I'm a, I'm a mechanic or a boy. Oh, boy. I'm, you know, I'm a, a, a physicist, right? I'm a philosopher. I went to Yale. Well, Peter's going to say, I'm sorry, we don't, you don't need any credentials. All you need to know is that you want to come and that you, you love everybody. That's the only, and because and, and, all of these amazing smart things that you want to be smart and everything, that comes from within you. You're already smart. God don't make no junk. So, again, we're talking about some sort of, we're, we're still kind of beating around the bush because sometimes you, you know you can hear all this stuff and it sounds great but you just need one thing that's going to really you know boom it's going to take you on in right take you to home plate we need it we need a home run here what how are we going to understand this so that we can make a difference in our life well here it is let's say that you believe you don't need material things right Oh, I don't believe it. See, I understand that. I don't need material things. All right. But on the other hand, you say, yeah, but you know, I just I just keep all my material things. Uh, you know, I don't really need them, but uh, I use them. And, you know, yeah, I make a billion dollars a year. And I've got a penthouse and this house and that house and the other house. What do you need all those houses for? You could be giving them to the poor. I mean... Again, it's not that you have money per se that makes you bad. But it's that, why are you holding on to something? It's like, it's like saying, oh, we're going to go camping, okay? And this guy has got camels and, and, and a whole, you know, mule train and tents and, and backpacks and scaffolding and camera crews. And he's going camping. You're like, you don't need all that. You can't carry all that you're going to get tired it's not all we're doing is walking over here to this mountain you don't need all that you say well yeah i like taking it with me anyway well you're not there then to get to the top of the mountain to take a little walk and to see what's over there you're there for some other reason you're trying to uh document it and make a bunch of money off of it or you know, monopolize on some aspect of, you know, uh, studying it and writing a book on it, or I don't know what you're doing it for. You make a, a, a documentary out of it, put it on YouTube, fine. If your intentions are that you got to film it to show people to illustrate some truth to help them understand, it could be all right. But if you're just trying to get to the top of the hill, you don't need all that. And sometimes, it, it, you know, it'd be like, um, <sighs> burdening yourself with stuff so that you can't even literally get where you're trying to go. I mean, if you were trying to take a walk over to this little brook and have a nice little drink out of the brook and go fishing or something. You wouldn't 
put a bunch of gold in your pocket saying, well, I, I think this gold is really important. Now, I don't, I don't really believe in gold, Dave, but I got to take this gold with me. I'm going to take 40 pounds of gold, you know, in one pocket and a big backpack with about 500 pounds of gold. You know, it's important. I love this gold. I'm packing it around with me. Oh, but I don't believe in it, Dave. I don't believe in it. All right. But you see, you're packing it around and it's debilitating your life. You can't get to what you really want, which is the love. All you wanted to smell was a flower, not a big pound of gold. The only reason you'd be packing gold is because you're addicted or you're, you're, you're in bondage to this gold. It rules over your mind because of some false belief in it. You think it's important to take with you, but it's not. It's burdening you and weighing you down. So in a sense, if you go to college and you take this PhD, it's not, you're not only not learning the truth, and you have to live in the right paradigm. You may be learning Newtonian physics and, hey, that's not even right, man. Oh, you got to wait till Einsteinian physics comes out. You can understand it better. Oh, well, we got, uh, you know, quantum physics. Uh, wait a minute. As long as you're studying the physical world with your physical eyes and trying to figure out what this physical thing is and you're not really understanding who you are, you're lost. So, yes, you literally can't have your cake and eat it too. You literally got to either be in the spiritual or in the physical. So therefore, anybody who's in this world, you hear all these gurus from, from India, like when they're writing a book, you know, and they're, they got a turban and they're sitting in this little cross leg position and they're, um, you know, and they're so wise and you ask them some amazing question and they give you some amazing answer, but yet they're still here in this world. They're still bound by all of these laws that they say they don't believe in. They're still... I don't know what's going on. Hold on, guys. There's something happened here. Okay. <laughs> Started losing my battery. It's almost an hour here. I'm going to have to close. But there's still, you know, there's this guru and he understands all the wisdom of the, the wise ones, but he's packing around this big 500 pound backpack full of gold. You say, well, I thought you don't believe in gold. Oh, well, I don't believe in gold, but I'm just taking it with me. See, you literally have to stop reading books to find the truth. Because Jesus says, you don't need a man to teach you. I will send you the Holy Spirit will teach you. She will teach you all things. So what do you need to know? Well, I, I, I tried that. I sat in a meditative position, Dave, and I, I, I stopped, you know, I closed my eyes and closed my ears and I listened and I couldn't find God. So there's a problem. You already are with God. You were with him from the beginning. You don't need to find him. He's not far off from any one of this, the Bible says. All you got to do is stop believing in the clutter around you. Stop believing in the significance and the importance of your your career and your big house and your big car. And, oh, oh, you know, I'm 50 miles from my home and I'm on barefoot and it's a long ways and I could die. It's too far to walk and I don't have any food. Those are illusions. As long as you believe in those things, you're 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 suffering. And you, and you hear gurus from India talking like this. But why is it that nobody seems to be able to get out of this? Because we still want to hold on, however small it may be. You say, well, yeah, but I want to have all my ceremonies and, and my religious, you know, beliefs. I want to pack them around in a little bag, even though I don't, I know that's probably not real, but, but I'm still holding on to even the English language. You could literally go through life without saying and talking and babbling, babbling on as we're doing here. But it seems as though, for me, the only way I can seem to somehow get these ideas across to the people that are on my channel it seems like I've got to just go on and on and explain and use more parables and, and, and do whatever I have to do 
to illustrate all of this for you. But in a sense, all we really have to do is finally, at the end of this video, turn it off and walk away. Put your keys down, your credit card, your deed to your house, put it down. You don't need to own anything. That doesn't mean you need to throw your sandals away or take off your clothes and stand in the, you know, or, 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 or shoot yourself in the head. No, see, that's the same what we're talking about. You got to live in your thoughts, whatever they might be. So you start with the thoughts that you've got. You've got shoes. Okay, great. You got shoes. You got some clothes. You might get cold. All right. You got some, you got a coat. All right, fine. Take off now. What do you want to do? Oh, I want to, I want to be happy. Okay. But now your mind says, oh, but in order to be happy, I need money. So I got to get a job and I get stress myself out and buy the mortgage and do, 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 do. Now you're not happy again because you immediately shifted your mind back into the other paradigm and you actually started believing that there's some reality to this physical world, that you're not manifesting your own reality. It's that simple. Now, what you want to do is you want to say, well, look, Dave, I want to try what you're saying, but I ain't going to give up my job and my house and start walking down the street. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take one week and I'm gonna go into the woods and sit in a spot. And I'm just gonna sit there and stop believing in the world for one week. And if it works, then I'll get rid of all my stuff. You know, I, I, my, I like to follow you, Jesus, but my father just died and I've gotta go bury my father. And Jesus said, you go let the dead bury their dead, you come follow me. The whole point is to follow that inner spiritual truth and not this physical outward world. So if all you got out of this video today, the real is, was the realization that you are not ready for the truth, you can't handle the truth, well, at least now you know. At least now you know why the world is the way it is why we're having all of these wars and all of these problems, why there are so many prisons, because there's people out there that want you to be in prison. They don't like you. They hate you. They're living in another paradigm. But here's the sad part. You may be living in the same paradigm because you probably want justice. You probably want to get back at them. And you don't need to because that world they live in it's fake. You don't even need to live in that world. Well, I know what you're saying, Dave, but that's just ridiculous, you know, for you to say that there's no reality to this reality. I can see it's real. You tell that to some guy that's in prison the rest of his life or tell that to, you know. Well, sometimes it's difficult. If you're in a dream, and you want to find out how to wake up in the middle of this nightmare. If you're in the middle of a nightmare. And something. You're in, and all of a sudden a thought comes to your mind while you're in this nightmare. It could be just that one little thought that could save you. But it's only temporary. That's what usually happens. It's a cycle. No matter what happens, our Father in Heaven doesn't let us bear more than we can bear. So, even when we're in a nightmare, there's always these little things. What we have to do then is start practicing preparation. Say, before I go to sleep at tonight, I'm going to suggest to my subconscious mind that I'm going to have a wonderful dream. And you do that for a while and you practice it and you begin to see it works. And then you can start practicing it in real life. You say, you know what, I'm going to start suggesting to my subconscious mind that I'm not afraid anymore. I'm going to start acting the part. I'm not going to be afraid anymore. And so you sometimes you have to go slow. Sometimes like Jesus said in the Bible, sometimes these deceptions and these phobias and fears, they won't go out without 
prayer and fasting. In other words, you can't just say, I don't understand why I've got all these fears and I can't get rid of them. You have to literally fast. Okay, it's like saying, oh, I've got all these poisons in my system and I ate all these pizza and all this cake and all this soda pop and I don't understand I've got all these poisons. Well, how do I get rid of them? Sometimes you got to fast. Detox. You got to make a decision. No more am I going to believe the lies. No more am I going to eat the poison. You got to start from a certain place and you got to understand that as long as I've got all these toxins within me, I'm going to be sick for a while until I can fast for a while. It may take 40 days or seven times baptized in the river. In other words, do it until you're done. The seventh day you shall rest. And it comes to a finish. How many times shall I forgive, Lord? Seventy times seven. Okay, do it until it's finished. So if you're still living in the world and the world still has power over you like a, a, a magic spell, like a curse, then what you have to do is you have to say, look, I understand why it's happening to me. I'm not going to pretend it's not here, but I do know the truth and I know what I got to do. I got to wean myself off of it. It's like being on a drug and you're addicted and it's, it's, it, you're going to have to count the cost, Jesus says, and figure out what you can do. And, you know, it's, I'll tell you one thing. It's much, much better if you're really serious about finding that place where you can really and truly be happy. It's really not a good idea to try and wean yourself slowly. And I, you hear a lot of people say, well, New Year's resolution. This year, I'm not going to drink myself to oblivion with whiskey every night. You know, I'm just going to give up whiskey. Okay, that's a good idea, right? The problem is you're going to fail in your resolution. You know why? Because you didn't also say, I'm going to stop being depressed. I will no longer believe in the enemy. See, you got to go right to the root. It's like, it's like having a garden and saying, well, uh, you know, I'm going to go out there and weed my garden. That'll be good, right? But you don't give your garden any water. First, it's got to have sunshine, and you got to plant the seed, you know, get up all of it. One thing isn't good enough, just one thing. So if you're going to have a garden that's going to grow, you got to make sure it's got everything that it needs to grow. So if you're going to try and do these things, you're going to have to start believing the truth, acting the truth, and you cannot allow any more lies. You say, get thee behind me, and you're going to have to get serious. Now, I sense that there's a little bit more I wanted to, to say. And I think in, in a coming video, we're going to get a little deeper into this. Just a little bit more. But we're well over an hour now. And so I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. I hope you guys have a really great day. It's David Vos. We'll see you again tomorrow.